A week after signing a budget that included more money for teachers and school districts, Governor Doug Ducey traveled to Tucson. One of his stops included Raytheon for a dedication ceremony celebrating an expansion project. Afterward, we spoke to the governor one-on-one -on -one about several issues that have come up since the start of the year. We started with the unprecedented push by teachers to increase education funding. Governor, I read the 80-page education funding bill. In it doesn't quite necessarily say that it has to go directly to teachers, really at the discretion of school boards. Is there some plan to work closely with school boards to ensure that teachers get that 9% out of this? So these raises were passed for our teachers. The plan was informed by our teachers, and we worked with the people in the education community because we believe in local control, and I don't think anyone wanted to see K-12 education being run out of the governor's office or the state legislature, that the intent language is in the budget that these dollars go to our teachers, and it's a 20% pay increase by school year year 2020. But superintendents did want some flexibility. Say if you have a teacher at the lower end of the pay range who's three years in and making $30,000 and to retain her they need a, a larger bump versus someone who's been around a decade or two at the higher end would still be eligible of course for a raise but the fact of the matter was that we wanted 20% that could go to teacher pay raises and the way the state would evaluate the success of the plan is that we'd, we would see the average teacher pay in the state of Arizona go from what it is today, which is $48,372, to three years from now to be uh, north of uh, $58,100. Is it your recommendation to school boards that they put that funding into their funding formula, which is, you know, is based off of an experience index or salary schedule, or is it a flat rate for everybody, the least experienced to the most experienced? Well, I want you to know in the in the state budget, it is in the, the base, and that's how you make it permanent, ongoing, and it becomes part of the inflated dollars. It's the most protected dollars you can have at the state level. The recommendation I have for local districts is just that this money gets to our teachers. Will there be penalties should a district decide to do what it needs to with that money instead of going directly to teacher pay? I would think there will be consequences if that is is what's happening. There's enough concern and loss of trust in our community as to why dollars don't get to the classroom, why dollars don't get to our teachers in support of our kids. There's been a lot of discussion about overhead and bureaucracy and administration. That's why these dollars were passed specifically for teachers and put in the budget that way. Can you obligate the state legislature moving forward? Let's say you're not governor, pass next term. Can you obligate the legislature to be sure that 5% is built into the tax base? These uh, raises, this 20% this, uh, by 2020, has been uh, very unusually done, which is normally not done in our budgeting uh, protocol, and that's called advance appropriation. So they are already in there. Those pay raises are in there. Uh, the only way to change that is you would need someone to come into this office and proactively remove them. I've already committed that I'm going to veto any budget that's anything less than this. And I would think anyone that would be in this office, because those dollars are there and they're committed to the teachers, would be moving these to the teachers. These are fair questions. They're questions that teachers have asked me. And I understand them, especially given the, the, the past history of, of the state's economy. But I want them to know that these dollars have been committed permanently inside the budget. It is also fair to say, though, that not every teacher will get a 9% pay raise. This money is kind of distributed over a district? Well, it's distributed over a district, and we have to give flexibility to the superintendent and the principal. There may be a situation inside a school uh, where they're going to make certain choices. They will have a 9% pay increase in total pay, how they administer that, we have to have local control. We have to let uh, decisions be made depending on the circumstances. And like I said, newer teachers that are lower on the pay scale, ideally we'd like to see them get the largest bumps. And of course we want to retain and reward the teachers that we respect and have been here for some time. You said no new taxes, but we are seeing that there's a vehicle tax increase here in Pima County. Homeowners will see a, a tax increase to pay for the desegregation dollars. 
Does that equate to raising taxes to pay for this funding bill? Well, there, there's no new taxes, and I want to separate these things out. In terms of the vehicle license fee, that, that's a fee, and it's a user fee. And that same user fee was in my first budget. We weren't able to get it over the finish line. No one was calling it anything more than a fee at that time. If it was a fee three years ago, it's a fee today. Um, in terms of uh, what's happening county by county, we want to have good budgeting at the county level, regardless of the county. The state's going to be responsible for its budget, and counties also need to tighten their belt and make the right decisions so that they're not subsidizing their county expenditures on the backs of other counties. That's what the state budget supports. There's no tax increase in the state budget, and you won't see any tax increase in the Ducey administration, although we've been able to increase our investment and spending rather dramatically because of our growing economy 